Almost every child living in the city of Kabwe has dangerous levels of lead in their blood. Given Mwanza is one of them. More than half of the kids here have lead levels in their blood that health experts say require immediate medical attention. Compared to kids in Flint, Michigan at the height of its water crisis, children here in Kabwe have an average of over 20 times more lead in their blood. But hospitals run by Zambia's government don't have enough money to do anything about that. They're short on tests, lack effective treatments, and don't track the numbers of hospitalizations or deaths. So parents who can't afford it come to private clinics like this one. Two things. First, moments could mean that omolopa so to learn that anemia. Number two, to wake a champed off. So to fetwa send omolopa to a pima to a checking at a monarchy a pair of sign. Gakukun can yap on omoti. When lead enters the body, it aggressively attacks the nervous system and can cause lifelong brain damage and stunt a child's development. People who have been exposed are more likely to have pregnancies that end in miscarriages or stillbirths. Children absorb lead at an even higher rate and are more likely to be exposed as they play outside. For decades, this city was the center of Africa's lead mining industry. Now, much of the city is toxic land, full of the remnants of this country's golden era of mining. In fact, many rate Kabwe as the most toxic city in Africa, one of the most contaminated in the entire world. Poisonous debris is spewing out from these fumes, and people have been breathing in this day in and day out for nearly a century. Kabwe's lead problem began in the late 19th century when British colonial industrialists found large deposits of lead and zinc. And for decades, European companies, led by the British company Anglo-American, extracted lead ore with no pollution controls. Fumes covered much of the surrounding soil and water with lead dust. Eventually, the mine was transferred to a state-owned company called Zambia Consolidated Copper Mining, or ZCCM. In 1994, the mine was shut down, but millions of tons of toxic waste was left in a large uncovered dump site known locally as the Black Mountain. And for the last 28 years, waste from the site has been seeping into the air, water, and soil, and polluting surrounding schools, homes, and playgrounds. More than 200,000 people currently live in the city of Kabwe. When the mine officially shut down in 1994, it didn't stop people from mining. Folks need to make a living. So they come over to leftover mine sites like this one to extract lead and other minerals such as copper, manganese, and zinc. And you can see the smelter just over here. And this is where they extract the minerals from the ore through intense heat. And the fumes blow all across this area. So this is very dangerous work, toxic to their health. Matthew Tembo has been mining here for about a decade. He says he started coughing up blood years ago and was even told he had lead poisoning. There are some experts who are working on the environment. They say that this work you're doing is dangerous and they want it to stop. 
Instead of having the reputation as being the most toxic city in Africa, what would you like to see Kabwe stand for? <laughs> Scientists and doctors have been studying lead poisoning here since at least the early 1970s. They accuse ZCCM and Anglo-American of deliberately covering up the extent of lead exposure. Kapumpe Valentine Musakanya worked for ZCCM when the mines were shut down. And at that time, he says there was evidence of lead contamination. What shocks me about Kau is that political and commercial uh, matters took precedence over public health. What was your role in helping to decommission the mine in 1994? I started by trying to ascertain what was the extent of the lead poisoning and community contamination. And I then went in, conducted uh, with various teams, soil, blood, lead testing, community levels in the mine licensing areas and ascertained the blood levels, which were quite high. And it therefore meant that, uh, as I advised the, the, the mining company, we couldn't walk away. We couldn't just close up the mine and walk away. There was a legacy issue which we had to resolve. But can you honestly say that the government and ZCCM were transparent in communicating what was wrong with the lead poisoning issue here? So there was a restricted element of communication, yes. You couldn't tell uh, a mother what had really happened. And uh, there were fatalities. And some of the fatalities happened in my hands, so it's a lot of them. It was very difficult. How many mothers were you not able to tell? A lot. But was there a cover-up attempt? I wouldn't use that term. I, I would more say there was an uh, inaction and an incapability to do perhaps the, the right thing. More than 100,000 people are currently part of a lawsuit suing Anglo-American for pollution from the Cowboy Lead Mine, which they managed between 1925 and 1974. They want compensation and a full cleanup. It's being heard in South Africa because class action suits aren't allowed in the Zambian legal system. And the court is yet to decide if the case can proceed. One of the families spoke to us anonymously. <laughs> It must be difficult for you to see him like this. So tell me, why did you decide to join the lawsuit against Anglo-American? Your son needs to have special treatment. Are you getting that treatment now? Anglo-American disputes that they are responsible for the lead contamination and instead blame ZCCM. ZCCM representatives say they are not aware of such claims. Over the last decade, the World Bank has given the Zambian government millions of dollars to clean up the Kabwe area. When we actually look at um, the uh, decision by government to borrow for environmental cleanup purposes, which is something that um, 
uh, is rarely done, is an indication of the level of commitment. Tell me about this school that we're in. We actually picked up this school for remediation because when we came through to conduct uh, measurements uh, in terms of the lead levels in the school surroundings, we found the lead levels above the acceptable uh, standard. We dug a certain distance into the ground to remove the contaminated topsoil and uh, then we exchanged it with uh, cleaner soil which was sitting at the bottom. And uh, over and above that, we decided to do paving, which is uh, to create a physical barrier. But of course, we don't have control over what happens to the kids outside of this place. Does the World Bank project tackle air pollution in Kabwe? Air pollution coming from mining and smelting activities? My answer is no. We do not have that mandate. I've been here for about five days mm -hmm. and seeing the fumes coming out from the smelting, it's shocking. It yeah, really yeah, is yeah. shocking. The escape of the fumes alone does not represent non-compliance. The Environmental Protection Agency, the Mine Safety Department, they have set pollution levels. Right. Has yeah. the project been effective? We do not have sufficient resources under the project to be able to conduct remediation in all the affected townships. But here is the point. It does not matter the amount of work that uh, we uh, can do as a project if the primary source of pollution okay, continues to generate. Uh, it does not matter the amount of work that you do in the outside environment. How does it make you feel to know that Kabwe is rated as the most toxic city in Africa? <laughs> One of the most polluted in the entire world. Well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not privy to the parameters that we are used to do the ranking, because if you're talking about Chernobyl and you're talking about lead pollution in Kabwe, how does radiation pollution and lead pollution, heavy metal pollution, how do you put them on the same chart list? Are you concerned about your own health? I'm Michael Learmont, Editor-in-Chief of Vice News. Too often, traditional news outlets shy away from the real stories and experiences of those living through global conflicts, not Vice News. Our reporters are on the ground, fearlessly covering the human stories that shape our world. You and millions of others can continue to read, watch, and listen to Vice News for free. But we hope you'll consider making a one-time or ongoing contribution of any size at vice.com slash contribute. Every contribution, no matter how big or small, helps support the journalism Vice News brings to you every day. Thank you.